right? As you know, due to the presence of unpaired electrons in the discharge cell, so magnetic property, it is due to presence of unpaired electron in D subset. More the number of unpaired electron stronger the attraction in what field? In the magnetic field such substances are called para or ferro while if no electrons are unpaired in what subcell? In the subcell, such substances are called as what magnetic? Diamagnetic. So magnetic behavior absolutely and exclusively depends upon the number of unpaired electron in the D subset. You remember, if there is even one electron present in the D subset, unpaired, that means such substances are para. And para, more the number of paramagnetism, they are converted into the ferromagnetism. So they are very, very highest attraction in the magnetic field. And we remember, in D subset, not more than five electrons unpaired are possible. Because in F subset, in D subset, there are five orbitals. So, for example here, for example you can see copper, copper one positive, right, like iron, iron two positive, as well as iron three positive. So how many unpaired in the, these elements? 29, you cannot change the atomic number, 26, 26 and 26. So remember, argon. 3d10 and 4s1 but in case of the copper 1 that means further right argon first you lose the electron from the 4s then the 3d because energy of 3d is greater than 4s you remember n plus l rule above principle so here d how many unpaired electron no unpaired because d subset has 5 orbitals 1 2 3 4 5 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So how many unpaired electrons? 0. Because D is fully filled. So cuprous ion has no attraction in the magnetic field and these are known as what? Magnetic. These are known as diamagnetic. So far as iron is concerned, iron 3D6 and 4S2. Now, in this case, here D6, how many unpaired electrons? And therefore, if I write iron 2 positive, that means keep further right 3d6 or 4s0. So in this option, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and what is that? 6. How many unpaired electrons are there? In the this option, 1, 2, 3, and 4. 4 unpaired electrons. In case of the iron theory, then it becomes 3d5, already 4s0. So maximum number of unpaired electrons ferric uh, is, what is that, n is equal to, what is that, 5. So more the number of unpaired electrons, more the attraction in the magnetic field and the such substances are known as para as well as ferromagnetic substances. Right. In addition to that, if question comes in your paper, calculate the magnetic moment calculate the magnetic moment or you can say magnetic spin mu mu of mn2 positive. So first remember the atomic number of the manganese, it is the iron 3d5 
and 4s0. Then how many unpaired electrons? N is here, how many unpaired? 5. So mu spin, mu spin or mu moment is equal to under root n into n plus 2 and the unit is the Bm. What is Bm? Bm is the, Bm is what is that? Bohr magneton where B is the Bohr and M is the magneton. M is what actually? Number of, what is that? Unpaired electron in D or even F structure. So far as mu spin for mu spin for m and 2 positive is concerned that is the under root 5 into 5 plus 2 bm that is under root 35 bm approximately 5.92 bm is the right answer. So the way you can calculate the magnetic moment of, what is that? Magnus 2 positive. What is the magnetic moment of copper 1 positive? Then no alien paired electron in case of the copper. So magnetic spin of copper 1 positive, that is the under root, that is the 0 into 0 plus 2 Bm, that is the 0 Bm. So some substances have no attraction in the magnetic field and they are known as what magnetic? Diamagnetic. Just like that, you calculate the magnetic moment of copper 2 positive. So you write, it is the argon <coughs> 3d9 or 4 s What is the value of n here? d9 means one unpaired electron. So calculate the mu spin magnetic moment the S spin is equal to under root n into n plus 2 Bohr magneton. So 1 into 1 plus 2 Bohr magneton under root 3 Bohr, Bohr magneton 1.732 Bohr magneton. One conclusion is made clear here that minimum magnetic S spin starts from 1.732. Why? Because of minimum unpaired is 1. That is why uh, the magnetic spin starts from 1.732 and they have attraction in the magnetic field. Right. So, the question comes that which of the which of the following is dia magnetic escandium 3 plus Zinc 2 plus, lanthanum 3 plus, actinum 3 plus, right? So, cadmium 2 plus and mercury 2 plus. All have no unpaired electron. So, answer is what is that? All. Even lutetium 3 plus, laurentium 3 plus, all have no unpaired electron. So they are known as, what is that? Paramagnetic. Here students, next property is the variable oxidation states. This is what? If the third is the variable oxidation states due to presence of number of unpaired electrons in which subcell? D subcell. So, variation in their oxygen state in transition metal is due to, you can see, uh, the presence of unpaired electron in the D subcell. I can show you, you can see here variation in their oxidation state. For example, scandium, titanium, vanadium, Chromium, magnesium, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, and what is that? Zinc. Just to go at a glance here. So, there is traits. Now, it is the 21, 22, 
Twenty three, twenty four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and thirty. Here, outer electronic configuration is outer electronic configuration is three D one and four S two, three D two and four S two. 3d3 and 4s2 chromium 3d5 exceptional case 3d5 4s1 and then you can say manganese 3d5 4s2 3d6 4s2 3d7 4s2 3d8 4s2 3d10 4s1 or 3d10 and 4s2 so here we would like to explain by taking unpaired electron in the D subset. So take the scandium first. D subset has 5 orbitals and it has 3D1 and 4S2. So far scandium is concerned. We had 1 electron. Here it is the 1 and 4S2. Since it is the lower energy, uh, 4S has 2 and this 1. So scandium can rule maximum. How many electrons? 3 electrons. So, scandium has maximum oxidation state, 3 positive. So, we take now, once you increase the atomic number 1 by 1, titanium, number of unpaired also going to increase. So, you take first minimum plus 2 because of it requires lower ionization energy. So, now you add 2 plus 1, 3 and plus 1, 4. So, plus 2, plus 3 and what is that? The way you have to increase the variation, I take first plus 2 because of 1 again increasing in the D subset, so it is pertinent to take plus 2 separate, then 3 as well as 4. In case of the vanadium, 3D3, so what is that? Plus 4. So plus 2, plus 3, plus 4. Plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, and what is that? Plus 5. Chromium, 3D5, and 4S1. So, minimum and a stable oxidation state is not 1, it is a 2. 1 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, then you take plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5 and plus 6. Right. So, in that case, manganese again, it is the 4 as 2. So, you take plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6 and plus 7. Plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6, and what is that? Plus 7. Now, plus 2. So, I is the 6 here. So, it is the pairing takes place. If pairing takes place, it will not take part in bonding. So, leave it. Plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, and plus 6. Plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, and plus 6. Plus 5 is very rare. So, we don't require it here. So, so far as cobalt is concerned, it is the 7 pairing takes place, it will not move. Plus 2, plus 3, plus 4 and plus 5. Plus 2, plus 3, plus 4 and what is that? Plus 5. Now in that case of the nickel, so this is what pairing takes place. Plus 2, plus 3 and plus 4 and so far as copper is concerned, 3D10 and 4S1. 1 plus 1, 2. So copper can use plus 1 as well as plus 2 because of it is the cuprous as well as the cupric. And then finally zinc will lose only 2 electrons. So the variation is found to be maximum in case of the manganese followed by the chromium. This is the plus 6 and this is the plus 7. And then the very important question is which element from the 3D series will show maximum oxidation state? It is your answer is what is that? Manganese. You take KMnO4, potassium per magnet. Anyone can calculate the oxygen state of the manganese in potassium per magnet. Let it be X. Potassium plus 1 plus X plus minus 2 into 4. Sum is taken to be 0. Plus 1 plus X minus 8 equal to 0. So obviously X is equal to plus 7. Right? Even per magnet ion. MLO4 1 negative. Calculate the oxygen state of the manganese. That is the X minus 8 equal to minus 1. X is equal to what is that? Plus 7. 
Second is the chromium, plus 6. Anybody can tell me any example of the plus 6? You can take chromium compound, potassium dichromate. That is the K2 Cr2O7, potassium dichromate, plus 2, plus 2x, minus 14 equal to 0, 2x is equal to 12, x is equal to what is that, plus x. Now, Cr2O7 2 2 negative, 2x minus 14 equal to minus 2, so 2x equal to 12, x is equal to plus 6, so it is proved here, it will show plus 6 oxidation state. The way you remember in uh, previous class, CrO5, what oxygen state of the chromium oxide? X minus 10 equal to 0, but X is equal to plus 10. So by conventional method is it wrong because the chromium is a member of the third, fourth, fifth and sixth group. So not more than valence electron. Oxygen states should be equal to the not exceeding more than the valence electron. So 10 is the wrong answer. So you draw the shape of butterfly shape, you remember, in a redox reaction. Oxygen, oxygen, oxygen and oxygen. It is what? Peroxide case you take. In peroxide case, minus 1, minus 1. But it is the minus 1 here, It is the minus. Chromium is taken to be X. X minus 4, minus 2 equal to 0 x minus 6 equal to 0 so x is equal to what is that? plus 6 you remember it is a butterfly shape what shape? butterfly shape another question is very important although scandium and zinc they do not show the variation in their oxidation state but why zinc is pseudo transition and scandium is the real transition anyone can explain it? although zinc, scandium and zinc do not show variable oxidation state although escandium and zinc do not show variable oxidation states but escandium is real transition and zinc is pseudo answer is very simple escandium contains one unpaired electron in D subset, that is why it is a real transition, while zinc is a pseudo fake transition, false transition due to the fully filled D orbital. As such, escandium is the real transition, but zinc is the pseudo transition.